So let's just start off with these um, contrasting stories of uh, Emily Wilder. She was a young reporter with the AP. She lost her job. Spoiler alert. She was the less powerful one in this kind of contrasting of two stories. Uh, and and Chris Cuomo, uh, who is the veteran anchor at CNN, brother of New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, um, they both had scandals last week. Uh, I would argue that the scandal involving Emily Wilder, the young reporter, was much more of the AP's reaction than any, than anything she did in particular. But if you, if you just don't mind laying out what happened, um, because I think it's super informative for the discussion we're going to have. Absolutely. So I'll start with Emily Wilder. Uh, Emily Wilder is a recent Stanford University graduate who worked for the Arizona Republic before taking an entry-level position at the Associated Press. Uh, The reason that this is news is because the Stanford College Republicans dug up some old social media posts of Emily, which were purportedly scandalous. Really, they just show that Emily was involved with some pro-Palestinian causes in college and once called Shelton Adelson a naked mole rat. Uh, This became construed as her being anti-Semitic. Emily has said that she herself is Jewish. Uh, The AP fired Emily, uh, allegedly for violating their social media policy though she has said that it has not told her what she did while a staffer at the AP to violate that policy. And the agency itself has not been forthcoming to the media on this point either. Um, So contrast that, as you said, with the case of Chris Cuomo, uh, star CNN anchor, politically very well connected, of course, to Governor Andrew Cuomo of New York. Uh, The Washington Post reported that behind the scenes, Chris Cuomo had been advising his brother, Andrew Cuomo, on certain sexual harassment allegations that have surfaced in the press, including New York Magazine, over the last few months. Uh, While CNN has said that that was, in fact, inappropriate, they've also said that he won't be disciplined or punished for doing this. So he still has a job. Emily Wilder does not. And we should say that the Um, advice that Chris Cuomo gave to his brother, the governor of New York, uh, one of the biggest states in the country. His brother was once deemed the democratic face of the pandemic. So this is not some um, local yokel official, right? Um, uh, It was in a fairly official uh, meeting. It wasn't, you know, two brothers talking, uh, giving each other advice over the phone. This involved um, the staff of Andrew Cuomo, uh, I'm not sure if it was campaign staff or official New York state staff. Um, That's correct, is it not? It was a strategy session. It was a formal strategy session. Right. So the point that I think that you made so well in your piece and uh, that I want the audience to glean from this is that this is about media deciding that, well, okay, we can't have the our the members of our uh, staff the the journalists that work for us be political in any way Mm -hmm. is there anything more political than advising your politician brother in an official meeting versus being a member of certain groups in college and holding opinions um this is largely hypothetical but just uh i'm gonna allow you to jump in here Yeah, I mean, it's certainly what Chris Cuomo did is is absolutely political. I would argue it opens him up to charges of corruption as well, obviously not in the legal sense, but certainly in the informal sense. Uh, It's not a good look, whereas Emily, if if she's guilty of anything at all, is guilty of something that's probably true of all of us, which is that we were political in college. Um, Dude. Journalists don't walk into most university campuses thinking, well, I'm going to be working for the Associated Press someday, so I'm not going to join any on-campus groups, not going to do college Democrat, you know, not going to volunteer with Planned Parenthood, not going to do any of that. Um, It's not really how it works, and I don't think that's how it should work, frankly. Well, so yeah, you wrote about in the piece just this impossible standard that the media has decided arbitrarily is the way forward, which is that essentially, if you have to, if you want to have a future in the media industry, you have to be a robot and you have to not have any opinions about the news. Seems to be contradictory. Why would you, you and I both work in news, why would we get into this industry if we did not care about the news? It's like it's not the pay, I'll tell you that. Uh it's like I want to 
uh, work in news because I care about the country. I care about politics, right? I was in groups myself, but they're going to hold that standard for um, for Emily. And then, of course, if you're more powerful, that's not necessarily the case. Curious if you have any thoughts about that kind of impossible standard and, and structure that that I think a lot of legacy papers like whatever, the New York Times, Washington Post, the AP in many areas uh, seem to still be clinging to. It is an impossible standard. And one, I would argue, gets applied to the left in a way that's not necessarily true of the right. Um, in the name of ideological diversity, I, I seems to me anyway that you know it's perfectly fine to come from a background in, in conservative media outlets and then go on to work for the New York Times or another outlet like that with relative ease. Um, and I'm not saying that necessarily shouldn't be the case if you're a good reporter, um, but that needs to be true of people who are who wrote for various left wing publications or were involved with various left wing causes. And here is where I think it's important to point out that what Emily Wilder is coming up against also is an, an older history of pro-Palestinian activism in particular being singled out, being treated as anti-Semitic, people who engage in it being targeted by groups like Canary Mission. Um, so there's sort of this thriving ecosystem that exists already to make sure that people are punished or penalized for engaging very specifically in this form of political speech. Yeah, I want to return to um, just kind of the the particular touchiness with which the media responds to Palestinian um, activism there. But I, I want to just kind of flesh out this this standard. I say that in air quotes um, of neutrality, uh, because, as you mentioned, one, uh, it's applied in a way that uh, usually is responsive to pressure from the right, if not just kind of this internal, um, I, I don't want to say PTSD loosely, but just colloquially to say that the, these media institutions are terrified of being called out for left-wing bias. I mean, I, can you talk about how that influences uh, these outlets and especially how it kind of, it affects uh, up-and-comers like Emily Wilder and people who are less powerful? Right. I mean, for all the talk of left wing cancel culture, I think we have seen that the right is very, very good actually at ginning up social media hysteria and pointing that in the direction of various people. And I do think news outlets are are you know more nervous than really they they should be about running afoul of, of such a campaign um, on the basis that it somehow undermines their credibility or, or qual calls their impartiality into into a uh, question. Um, but you know, reporters of color have been, you know have, have said that they have been pressured not to cover certain topics because they because of perceived bias issues. At uh, the Washington Post, there's the case of Felicia Sanmez, um, who was banned internally from from writing about certain issues because of her history as a sexual uh, a survivor of sexual assault. And the Washington Post, I believe, rescinded that ban recently. Um, and so I think that there is sort of a broader issue where this, this has been at play and it, it really does seem to be um, almost a public relations uh, fear that's coming into fore. It doesn't really seem to have much to do with protecting the credibility of an outlet's journalism. Yeah, so well said. And I mean, <laughs> that's the um, antithesis of, of of what they're at least purporting to do, um, which is truth telling in that way. But I mean, focusing on creating that impossible standard for um, for reporters that creates, I think, its own ecosystem in and of itself in which reporting isn't necessarily adversarial to the point that it should be and gives credence to ideas that are actually abhorrent in many ways but they're um treated on this uh, with the same amount of um deference that leftist ideas are just based on that kind of public relations consideration it, it's it's just it's very I, I have reporters in my life who work for some it's 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 very um reflexive and it, it's so embedded in how I think a lot of older school reporters kind of see their role. Hi, I'm Sam Cedar. You can watch the rest of this interview and more 
on our Peacock show, which streams at 5 p.m. weekdays on The Choice from Peacock TV.